So we're done with two items of cash. So what are those two items? The money itself, which is in the form of cash on hand or cash in bank. Then we're also done with your negotiable instruments and your cash equivalents. Now let's go to your cash funds. The main issue, the main issue regarding your cash fund is that uh, before we, we look into the definition or we look into the accounting for cash fund, let's first uh, define it. For cash funds, yeah, for cash funds, these are cash set aside for a particular purpose. It is a cash set aside for a particular purpose. Uh, take note, the setting aside here is not generally legal. It is not legal, meaning it is imposed by the entity. Imposed by the entity. What is the treatment, again, if ever it is legally restricted? Once there is a legal restriction, it is considered as not part of cash. Therefore, once it is legal, it is not part of cash. So for cash funds here, we're, uh, I hope we're on the same page that it is only imposed by the entity. If that is imposed by the entity, it is set aside for a particular purpose, then we follow this rule. So what is the rule regarding, for, regarding your cash fund? For cash fund that is entity imposed, for cash fund that is entity imposed, you need to determine whether that cash fund is for current operations or non-current operations. Okay? So if it is for current operations, then it is part of your cash. But if it is for non-current non operations, it is not part of cash. Okay? It is not part of cash. So I hope you are clear again that whenever we are talking about this cash fund, it is not the cash fund that is legally Impose. Because if it is legally imposed, it is, again, restricted. Therefore, it is not part of cash. Here, it is imposed by the entity. Whenever it is imposed by the entity, take note, you just need to determine whether the purpose is for current operations or non-current operations. So you check for the purpose, if it's current or non-current. If it's for current operations, it is cash. If it's non-current operations, it is not cash. Now, your problem is that when can we say it is a current operation or non-current operations? We go back to the definition of cash. We say it is cash It is if ever it is readily available for unrestricted use. Okay, It is readily available for unrestricted use. And whenever we say unrestricted use, normally we look into the current accounting period whether we can make use of that cash. So if ever it is for current operations, therefore, it is for unrestricted use. Kaya cash pa rin siya. Pag non-current non operations, it is not part of cash. So if that is a current operations, what are some examples? So Anything that is current, let's say payroll, it is current, it is part of cash. Petty cash fund, uh, it is current, therefore part of cash. Some examples of non-current, uh, let's say uh, PPE retirement fund. If that is a PPE retirement fund, PPE is generally non-current, then it is not part of cash. In short, guys, the rule here is that there is a cash fund and you will set aside it to a purpose. For the purpose, determine the type of account that particular purpose is set aside. If the account is current, katulad ng payroll, edi current yan. Kung PPE siya, ang PPE ay non-current, edi non-current siya. Ano pa ba? Bonds payable. Bond retirement fund. Bond is non-current. Therefore, it is not part of cash. So, dito sa ating cash fund, it is quite easy to understand or when will we include it as part of cash or not part of cash? As long as we are clear that this cash fund is entity imposed. Ingat dyan, ha? Kasi pag nakita nyo agad na legal yung restriction niya, anong sagot ninyo? Ang sagot dapat ninyo ay it is part of not cash. It is not cash. It is non-current. Why? Kasi nga may restriction. 
Gets naman natin yun kanina, right? Kaya pag tinapit natin tong cash fund, ang dapat nasa isip natin ay it is entity imposed. And in looking whether the imposition is uh, current or non-current, doon natin mababase kung cash siya or hindi. So again, the fund follows the purpose to which it is set up. So if the setup is for current, then it is for current operations. So what are normally current? Tax, uh, petty cash, payroll, those are currents, I, uh, current items. So kung current item yan, and the current operations, cash. Next, band, uh, PPE, ano pa ba? Mga retirement fund, those are non-current operations. If it is for non-current operations, it is not part of cash. That is for petty. Uh, that is for your cash fund. But before we proceed further regarding your cash funds, we have this specific item of cash fund that is normally as in your uh, board exam. And that is known as your petty cash fund. Petty cash fund. So what is a petty cash fund? A petty cash fund is a fund set aside for petty expenses. It is a fund set aside for petty expenses. So since it is only set aside for petty expenses, it is part of your cash. It is part of your cash. And there are two methods of accounting for your petty cash fund. We have your impress system. And then we have your fluctuating system. By the way, whenever we say impress, impress, it depends on whether it is impress petty cash fund versus impress control system. Sana hindi kayo malito. Pag sinabing impress system for petty cash fund, that is the method of accounting for the petty cash fund. Whenever we say impress control system, this is the internal control over cash. This is an internal control over cash. So what is this internal control over cash again? That the receipts, receipts are deposited intact deposited intact and disbursement are to be dispersed using check. That is your control system. That is in an internal control over cash. But whenever we talk about impress system only, as to petty cash fund, that is the method of accounting for petty cash fund. It is a method of accounting for petty cash fund. So let's talk about your petty cash fund. For a petty cash fund, what is the amount to be included as part of cash? Amount to be included as part of cash. The amount to be included only as part of your cash here is the uh, ending or the balance of petty cash fund. It is the balance of petty cash fund. So in short, if there are any expenses that are unreplenished, if there are any expenses that are unreplenished, then therefore, it is not part of cash. So only the remainder or the remaining balance for cash will be part of your petty cash fund. So normally, since we're talking about auditing problems or financial accounting, the main question here is what is the amount of the petty cash fund to be included as part of your cash? Just remember, whatever remains after you remove the expenses, then that is the amount to be included in your cash. That is the amount to be included in your cash. If ever, then what you need to do is uh, you deduct all the Normally kasi, di ba, given yung balance ng ating petty cash fund, the balance is given. And uh, in the other info, it will give you about the expenses that is unreplenished. Okay? If that is unreplenished, again, it is not part of cash. Okay? If it's unreplenished, it is not part of cash. So generally, your P PCF balance, you need to deduct here any unreplenished expenses, then that is now your balance. Or if you want, 
you can do it this way. Petty cash fund plus replenishment check, less expenses. Because replenishment check, less expenses, means your unreplenished expenses. Okay? Replenishment check, less expenses, is your unreplenished expenses. So if in case uh, you can uh, easily determine the unreplenished expenses, you just deduct that to the balance of your PCF. But if you cannot determine it, from the petty cash fund, you add your replenishment check and you deduct your expenses. You deduct your expenses. Furthermore, aside from the amount to be included as part of your cash, another item to be asked here in your petty cash fund is your uh, cash short or over. Okay? Cash short or over. So how do we determine your cash short or over? For cash short or over, you need to determine the amount of your petty cash fund based on your accountability. So this is the should be balance and based on your counted. So you determine the accountability versus your counted. If accountability is greater than counted, then you have a shortage. Right? You have a shortage. But if it is lesser, then you have an overage. If it is greater, it is shortage. If lesser, it is an overage. So your next problem, whenever you determine now that it is shortage or overage, we need to determine the accounting for it. So what is the accounting for your shortage and for your overage? Okay, so for your uh, shortage or overage, we first place it uh, on your cash short or over account. Ilalagay muna natin siya sa cash short or over account. Sir, paano po natin yon ilalagay sa ating cash short or over account? So, kailangan mo munang malaman kung ano yung shortage or ano yung ating overage. So, pag nalaman mong shortage siya, Ibig sabihin, kulang ay sobra yung PCF mo. Pag shortage, di ba? Sabi natin, sobra yung PCF mo. Pag overage, kulang yung PCF mo. So, if shortage siya, sobra yung PCF mo, so anong gagawin mo? Bawasan mo yung petty cash fund. And then, ilalagay mo yan sa cash short or over account. Ilalagay mo siya sa cash short or over account. And ano nang mangyayari dyan sa ating cash short or over account? You need to determine whether that cash short or over account is attributable to the cashier or not attributable. If ever it is attributable to the cashier, then you need to remove the cash short or over by debiting receivable from uh, receivable to cashier and then credit, cash short, or over. But if it is not attributable, then you debit it to loss, and then cash short or over. Ingat kayo ah, hindi ibig sabihin na pag shortage siya, loss na agad siya. So anong kailangan nating tingnan? If ever it is attributable to the petty, ca petty cash custodian or cashier, or not attributable. Pag attributable, ang i-recognize mo ay receivable. Pero pag not attributable, ang i-recognize mo ay loss. How about if ever it is an overage? If that is an overage, dalagdagan mo naman yung petty cash fund and then cash short or over. Now, you need to close your cash short or over. In closing the cash short or over, you need to determine whether again it is attributable or not attributable. If it's attributable, then... You debit cash short or over, and then you have here a payable to cashier. Payable to cashier. So magkakaroon ka naman dito ng liability. If it is not attributable, then you debit cash short or over, and you treat it as other income. Other income. Okay? Ingat lang kayo dito. Ah. Hindi porke shortage or overage siya, lagi na siyang loss or income. 
sometimes problem will tell you whether it is attributable or not attributable. Only whenever it is not attributable to any person, then it can be considered as a loss or other income. But once you can attribute it, it should be receivable or a payable. Okay, before we end your cash funds, let's again recap it. So for cash funds, your main issue is that whether it is current or non-current. But take note, whenever we're talking about cash funds, again, these are entity-imposed restrictions. Entity-imposed restrictions. If that is a current cash fund, it is part of cash. If non-current, it is not part of cash. And we also talk about one specific cash fund that is your pet cash fund. So generally, we need to determine what is the amount to be included on your cash. We said that is the balance of petty cash fund. And how do we get for the balance of the petty cash fund? So we get the petty cash fund, you deduct any unreplenished expenses. And how do we get for unreplenished expenses again? That is your replenishment check less any expenses from the fund. Next problem, whenever there is a shortage or overage. Whenever there is a shortage or overage. So when is there a shortage or overage again? You need to compare the accountability versus the accounted. Okay? Accountability versus the accounted or the counted. If the accountability is greater, then you have a shortage. In short, PCF balance is greater than the count. Okay? PCF balance is greater than the count. So what is our treatment? If ever, so this is our treatment. If attributable to the cashier, you have a receivable. If it is not attributable, then you have a loss. If accountability is lesser than accounted, then it means that we have an overage. In short, the petty cash fund is lesser than our count. If petty cash fund is lesser than our count, then it means that we need to increase our petty cash fund. If attributable, then you have a payable. If not attributable, then receivable and payable, you have an income. You have an income or other gain other gain. Okay? That's it for our petty cash funds and cash funds.